Hello and welcome to an all new Marvel cast, Exposure Network's hub of all things Marvel. We're going to talk about everything MCU and beyond, from Avengers and Defenders to Robbie Robertson and Ben Urich. My name is Ashley Hobley, joining me today, Ultimate Kieran Marshall. It is I here kicking off a fucking whirlwind trip around the globe. Well, you Ending? Ending? Ending a whirlwind trip? Well, we're Kicking also off? ending a trip right now. We're ending an MCU. Oh, you're, you're talking about the plot of the movie. So I, was, I, was, I thought you meant. I was, definitely. Oh, mm, okay. yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Luckily, this film was set 2019. Uh, also joining <laughs> us, Astonishing Dylan Blight. Happy to be here to close the chapter on this world and spanning journey. <laughs> and I mean the podcast, not the movie. I mean the podcast. I mean, my, the, podcast the podcast is continuing. This segment, this... uh. This one, let's rewatch these episodes. Because this we're, show we're isn't just a rewatch show, apparently. Yeah, it's all about the Marvel. You know? Listen to what you want to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> listen to what you want to watch too. But uh, listen to the Wonder Vision specials. We'll have some Falcon and the Winter Soldier episodes coming. This is the place. I mean, keep, they're probably, they're probably coming now. That's true. That's, that is that's very true. True. Listen to those. They are out. I love that show. Good shit. Yeah. I love the bits in before, with in before Dylan hates it because there's too many characters crossing over. <laughs> love Bucky. Good show. <laughs> All right, this episode we're talking about Spider-Man: Far From Home. Everywhere I go, I see his face. I just really miss him. Yeah, I miss him too. I don't think Tony would have done what he did if he didn't know that you were going to be here after he was gone. You going to be the next Iron Man now? Well, no, I don't have time. I'm too busy doing your jobs. What? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Look, keep up the good work. Because I am going on vacation. Heads up. Nick Fury's calling you. I don't really want to talk to Nick Answer Fury. The phone. Why? Because if you don't talk to him, then I have to talk to him. I don't want to talk to him. You sent Nick Fury to voicemail? I gotta go. You do not ghost Nick Fury. What up, dorks? What's up? We're just talking about the trip. I'm here in St. Marco Polo's. Oh, I think MJ really likes me. That reminds me when I first fell in love. You're a very difficult person to contact, Spider-Man. This is Mr. Beck. We could use someone like you on my world. New world? Beck is from Earth, just not ours. A snap to our hole in our dimension. You're saying there's a multiverse? We have a job to do. And you're coming with us. Uh, released 2019, directed by John Watts, written by Chris McKenna and Eric Summers, uh, based on Spider-Man by Stanley and Steve Ditko, starring Tom Holland, Samuel Jackson, Zendaya, Kobe Smulders, John Favreau, JB Smoove, Jacob Batalon, Martin Starr, Marissa Tomei, and Jake Gyllenhaal. Peter Parker, the beloved superhero Spider-Man, faces four destructive elemental monsters while on holiday in Europe. Soon, he receives help from Mysterio, a full fellow hero with mysterious origins. Uh, Dylan, what do you think of this rewatch of Spider-Man: Far From Home? Uh, it's still a pretty okay movie, and I think uh, it's you know it's a perfect plat- palate cleanser, I guess, for the the ap- epic, serious, death field thing that is endgame uh this thing is supposed to be a little bit more fun and whatever i would say though i really enjoy everything that's not a superhero film about this and to that i mean i enjoy peter just being a kid talking to his friends trying to hit it up with mj i even enjoy happy just trying to be like you know his scenes with the kids and all that sort of stuff but basically anything that comes you know nick fury fucking melon head um what's, what's his name <laughs> mysterio uh, <laughs> i forgot the villain's name this villain by the way i suppose uh any of that stuff i was very much like kind of zoning it out to be honest and maybe i i feel like i dislike i liked this film less on the rewatch and maybe a lot of that has to do with i know exactly where it's going the the swerve in the middle that i feel like most people saw coming when they watched the first time but you still didn't know because they've, they've done things of characters yeah before that we've you've obviously seen. they've changed the scrolls control. completely yeah exactly so you know the first time watching it you're like it's probably this it's probably not we'll see how it goes uh but yeah on this rewatch i was like knowing where it's going and all this sort of stuff i just didn't the first half of the movie all the tricky dicky stuff i was like whatever i don't really get it. I really love old school stuff though kind of wish this movie was literally just peter 
on a holiday, dealing with his friends, trying to, you know, like it was just a rom-com, <laughs> teenage rom-com. It was called Love. Peter would have loved that. <laughs> would have loved that. Good, good, would have been all about that. So, yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel about it. All right. Kieran, what do you think of Spider-Man Far From Home? It's a solid movie. I think it's a good epilogue to this phase of the MCU. Um, it's nice that a character finally gets to not only begin with dealing with trauma and the passing of someone they loved, but by the end of the movie, work through it healthily and actually have some character growth in terms of dealing with that trauma throughout the movie. Like that is that is quite nice to uh, witness throughout this movie compared to a particular character in Endgame. Um, but it's weird I how think, we recorded these out of order. So, I it's mean. really weird how we definitely record them out of order. Um. And how much you love that Thor arc in, in Avengers mm, Endgame. Yeah. That's how I remember it. Oh, uh, or yeah. that's how I expect it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's a solid movie. Um, I guess my only fault I ever have with this movie is part of me just wishes this was a more neighborhood Spider-Man story. Like, I don't need all the glow trotting and a Spider-Man story. I'm cool with him just being in New York and, and kind of continuing that storyline that kind of progression for his character but jet setting across the world you know not having it seem like too much of a coincidence that spider-man or somebody with similar powers is showing up in the same locations um is always fun i guess that how this movie deals with the blip is interesting because it's our first kind of major dealing with the blip since the since endgame and you know we we get to see it we get to see uh, there's more about the blip in this movie than i remembered we get to see the band blipping back into existence in the middle of a basketball game where they get like that's a funny scene it's hilarious but now imagine um, that in a road (laughs) yes now exactly imagine that in a busy highway good luck to those people like a cross like one of those pedestrian like crossings again i'm gonna call back to that helicopter we see crash in the uh, (laughs) captain marvel and credit scene that dude has come back, gone, I'm a lot, and then he died. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's two options. Either he blipped in midair, or he blipped in the wreckage of that helicopter that is no longer there or something. Inside like the wall of yeah. the building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, it, it has very good moments. I think the storyline of Peter dealing with Tony's passing, but then having so much pressure put on his shoulders to be, like, the new Iron Man or to fill that void um, and him to come to terms with it. Um, it's fantastic, and I really love Mysterio in this movie. I think Jake Gyllenhaal does a great job throughout the whole thing. Um, I like the swerve, even though you kind of, if you know Mysterio from any comic book or TV show or anything, you know he's a bad guy. Uh, but I think how they, not only how they played Mysterio as a character, because I think the original origin for Mysterio was he's like a, a special film, effects artist, yeah, special effects artist. Um, so to not only then transition that, and then to put him with characters that have been featured. Especially, like, the one that always gets me that I'm always impressed with is the guy that was in Iron Man 1. The uh, first one, which I remember looking up after leaving the cinema because I was like, there's no way it's the same dude. And then I, yeah, but it is. I'm like, it's wow, 100% okay. the same actor, which you're like, oh, okay, that's impressive. But to steer that to though all those characters have relation to Tony Stark and continuing the storyline that way is really good. I love Tom Holland and Zendaya's uh, like chemistry on screen. I think MJ grows on you more and more. This movie, I think. In the first movie, she was a bit kind of, a little bit too quote unquote weird. Or she's barely or, in it. To she's be barely, she's she very has, much. She probably has like five minutes. A minor character in that film. <laughs> yeah, she's given Which a lot is, of fringe yeah. screen time, but this movie, she's given a lot more time to flesh out and be part of it. Um, I think, I think as a yeah, as a high school movie, though, this is a good movie. It's just it it. There's some weird. There's like. My brain, this happens a lot, where I've said it a number of times in this movie, where my brain's like, how do people not piece this together, like the whole situation with it being drones the whole time, and I don't know how some of the drones do the special effects, but sure, whatever. It is what it is. Um, it's amazing hologram tech. Amazing hologram tech, but then that actually could light things on fire and do things like well, that. Well, the, the drones are shooting things or have yeah. flamethrowers yeah, in them, is what I they know. explain. Oh, no, but yeah. I mean, here. when you think about it, the timing on those must be amazing, you know, from the to actually hit Peter and for him to feel like he felt something. Yes. You know? Yeah, exactly. What's well, exactly. not fake? Like they shoot real bullets. Yeah, but, but make him. But for to, make him feel like the elemental is hitting him. Is hitting him rather than he just got oh, shot right. like a heap of times yeah, by yeah, drones yeah. and stuff. 
Yeah. Um, I would. I assume it's no different than VR, right? Like you know, you try in VR, you feel like you're falling, you feel sick because you, like your your brain yeah, gets tricked, even though you you know it's fake. You know. Yeah, but when you hit some, when you land on the ground in a VR game, you don't feel the ground below you. I don't know. Have you ever fallen in a VR game? Because I have, and I felt the ground come up fast, Ash. You know what I'm saying? No, but you don't actually feel the ground hit you. No, because I hit the ground. <laughs> uh, I enjoy the film. I don't think it's, like, amazing. I don't, I don't know if I... I don't think I like it as much as I did Homecoming. Um, I do enjoy them going around Europe. I think it fits with the story of Peter warning to... He's... As much as he loved being wanting to be a superhero in the first movie, obviously he's gone through a lot since then, and he desperately feels like he needs a break. Uh, I feel like it's it would have been nice to see a little bit of the past eight months. I guess would be the thing. Like how much it's is Spider? Just school, I guess. No, but like how much Spider Man stuff is he actually doing in that eight months? All the criminals got blipped back in. They were in jail. I don't (laughs) think it works like that. (laughs) You know, all these people ask, he's constantly getting asked if he's going to be the next Tony Stark and that kind of thing. So, you know, uh, obviously people are expecting him to save the day constantly. Um, Also, at the start of the, I will say, at the start of the film, it felt weird, especially watching Far From Home so soon, seeing Peter so desperately in love with MJ. uh, It kind of feels like it comes out of nowhere. But by the time he's trying to win her over, you know, you don't care because they're, but then also, they're great like, together. It's it's eight months. Kids change and get feelings in eight months. It's like, been more than eight months since Homecoming. Yeah. To be like, eight months yeah. since Homecoming, yeah. It's been a lot longer. It's been, It'd probably be it's, like six it's been years. a couple of years. Yeah, well, not yeah. six. It's probably like one or two. Well, there I mean, was, technically there was, six. There's a five-year gap in between. Well, also the, two. There was, yeah, I was about to say, there's probably <laughs> like a year between Homecoming. But clearly both MJ and... Um, yeah, yeah, they both got both blips. Got I know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, but I'm saying like there was a year between Homecoming and Infinity War, roughly. So you could like you don't know what's happening then. Their romance, his feelings to bloom. You know what yeah, I mean? that's true. Uh, I will say I loved how they actually yeah they the opening to the film of uh, well not the the Myster- not them meeting Mysterio for the first time, but the you know the eulogy or tribute to the fallen Tony Avengers, Stark. the terrible Windows Movie Maker tribute to Tony yeah. Stark. The one where they got like a terrible, blurry picture picture of vision, <laughs> uh, and, and it's like Google images where they didn't Getty's, know how to get the a Getty's the, images of the, of the yeah, candles, yeah, and like the yeah. t- the Tony's Tony Stark images like from like ten years ago, back from when like Iron Man one was released and stuff. It's just yeah, yeah. The true. funniest thing about this movie though is literally that Peter's like, I want to break. I don't want to do this superhero shit for this movie, and I'm like. Me either, dude. I kind of wish you didn't have to either. <laughs> oh, I'm with you, Peter. I'm with you. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I love... I think they really did a great job with Mysterio in this and, like, they showed off his power set from the comics in the best possible way uh, they could. Uh, I really enjoy Nick Fury in this, this film, even though it's technically not Nick Fury. Uh, I think it, it's a nice... I think I read in, like, the Wikipedia, it's a nice switch compared to Tony Stark in the first film, uh, where... Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> where Tony Stark was the cool father figure, uh, Nick Fury is the stepdad. <laughs> you know what? I always thought th- until the, the the twist at the end is revealed. While watching this movie, Richie, I'm like, "Fuck, Nick Fury is the biggest dick for like no reason in this movie. This is the weirdest like character change like going. Like I- even in terms of Nick Fury's been a dick in the past, but he's never been." It's almost like he's playing a parody of himself or someone's yes. pretending to be yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. Which is, at the end of it, you're like, <laughs> oh, I oh. understand now. But while you're watching it, you're like, fucking hell, dude. You are pushing this kid a bit too far, you know? <laughs> that was a good thing about this rewatch, actually. Because I, I, I haven't rewatched since, this since the cinemas. And, yeah, rewatching it now, knowing that, it, all of the Nick Fury scenes just have a, a kind of separate layer to them, which is yes. which is quite funny. So, Yeah. He's super happy to, like, trank anybody and everybody. Yeah. I think it, it, Talos just likes doing that. <laughs> <laughs> the next person that knocks on this door will be going to another funeral. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a great... I, I really enjoyed it, obviously. You know, the Eater thing. I mean, it's kind of weird that Tony would just have this whole set of drones that he's never used. Why didn't he call those drones up during Endgame? They weren't going to help with fucking... 
You could have shot some stuff down. Yeah, well, like what? Is, no, like, that was you like let a- all these, all these, <laughs> all these uh, magic users and Wakandans and as whatever's left of the Asgardians come running out. And you the just, thing is, he was know, like, it's fine. I'll leave these drones for later. Mm. Hey, drones. Yeah. Also, we what we don't know is part of me has this weird superstition that in a future movie we're going to have find out there's been like a AI Tony Stark doing stuff in the background, um, and. It's I don't know. Dylan's just pulled a face, and Ashley. It's a terrible idea. I feel like it's <laughs> going to happen because there's going to be like he's going to made himself into a version of Jarvis or some shit. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. ain't going to want to record fucking AI lines. He's like, I'm dead, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead. I'm not coming back. I ain't coming I'm, back to well. well I mean, it's an easy he, paycheck. I mean, Paul, it's like reverse Paul Bettany. That, he's already said in interviews he's open to coming back for stuff. He didn't say he said it's not the end. Like, yeah, have, it doesn't have to be the end. Yeah, I mean, he could come back for flashbacks. Kind of, I if think the money's been, right. If the yeah. money's right. And by that, I mean lots of zeros. Uh, and that means, no, no, no. Disney's just going to give him a checkbook. And be yeah. like, look, every time we want you in a movie, you just write yourself a nice little check out of that checkbook and cash it. All right? We good. <laughs> we good. <laughs> you, you value yourself. <laughs> I mean, it's not a crazy notion. Uh, I think, what was the name of that character from the VR game? That's the I.O. Yeah. I do not remember, but that is that is a story that is a storyline. Actually, that's a, that's a funny point in um in the PlayStation VR Iron Man game, which I think is just called Iron Man VR. He yeah. has made Tony oh, called the Gunsmith or the Weapon yes, Dealer or something like that, that yeah. is the name of it. Gunsmith, and yeah. it's an it's an AI that he had built to help him build weapons that he based entirely on himself, and it looks exactly like himself. And spoilers for like the first spoilers for the game, I guess at this point. But fuck it. In that game, uh, that AI turns against him and actually becomes the bad guy, and then he has to fight himself. So it's Tony versus Tony. So, so okay. yeah, that, that could be an interesting thing. I guess that that would be an interesting one to use for uh, Armor Wars. Yes, or yeah. or whoever is whoever steps up. Or to Iron be, Heart. Um, yeah, Iron Heart. Yeah. One of those ones, that'd be interesting. Uh, I hope they don't do Ironheart, by the way, I hope they don't do Ironheart for, like, many years and they can just have it be Morgan, his daughter. Yeah, until yeah. Morgan's older. I think that's... But the they've thing. already confirmed that they're doing it Ironheart with... What's her name? Do they? Yeah, whoever's playing Ironheart. It's like a Riri Williams, the current character in the comics. So, Morgan can be nah. a character one day. You know? She can be rescued. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... I really love all the touristy stuff that they do. Uh, I really enjoy the other guy who's also in MJ the entire time. Uh, and his, uh, his constant efforts to uh, screw... Evan? Screw. Evan or Eric? Something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, quick search. <laughs> Live IMD being, everyone. Not hey, the first Brad. Been done and not it's the bloody last Brad. Oh, Brad, there it is. Yep. Uh, yeah. Is that so, that's a funny bit, like the whole, especially like you know, the opera one where he just sticks in the finger. But I mean, just like having a character blip age up, like that's an interesting dynamic. Yeah, uh, yeah dynamic. My, that my, did. The blip, the blip was best used when uh freaking the teacher was Monster. Yeah, Monster's like my wife faked being blip. Like we had a funeral <laughs> for her and everything. I mean, the funeral was real, but. <laughs> Man, yeah. how sad! It's funny. Yeah. Oh, although that reminds me, I saw on the 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 plane screen. I was looking at the documentaries. Obviously, there's one on Wakanda. Obviously, there's the one on Tony Stark. Uh, I think there's one on Hydra. Then the fourth one, Eric Selvig doing Supernova or Nova, uh, like is, a documentary series. It's Eric Selvig. That's that's twice he's been mentioned in like recent. Like he's uh, on the screen in the start of Endgame as well, being like one of the people that's gone missing. And I'm like, you motherfuckers are just trying to remind us that he exists. Yeah. After so when he comes back, saw him being used as slave labor in the Avengers. Freaking no. Uh, last time facility. we saw him was Dark World being crazy. No, no, no. He's in. No, no, no. He's in. Oh yeah, he's in. Uh, he's in Age of Ultron. At Age the of end. Ultron. My yeah, bad. Yeah, because he's running around the facility, and we're like, where did all those people go? I'm just working off screen. It's just unfortunate that every time a camera's there, none of those workers are there helping out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 
I guess there isn't any MCU building this week. I guess technically uh, we could include J. German Jameson, uh, played by uh, J.K. Simmons, <laughs> uh, who appears right at the end of the film. Uh, so J. German Jameson uh, first appeared in The Amazing Spider-Man number one, March 1963, created by Stanley and Steve Ditko. Uh, incredible, uh, different take to the original Daily Bugle version, very much a, uh, you, well, from that, you can definitely tell it's more of the modern day conservative radio host type, um, not to name names, but definitely influenced by those type of, uh, personalities. (laughs) It's Alex Jones. Yeah, that's who, (laughs) that's who immediately came to mind. I didn't want to say his name because. (laughs) Don't look him up. Don't waste your time. Yeah, he doesn't deserve. Do you hear me? Is he listening? Probably. Maybe. You're a piece of shit, Alex Jones. <laughs> this all new Marvel cast is a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> Bring toads down all of us. Australia's even a real place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, so he's great. One thing I have with the whole uh, JJ. And I'll be, you know, let's not spend too long on the conspiracy theories because you can go watch, uh, listen to our Wonder Vision. If you listen to our Wonder Vision episodes, we'll spend a lot talking about theories for Jay Jonah. But um, one thing I do think is, do you think there's people, younger kids who only started watching like Marvel through this run and have no idea who the fuck he is and why it was such, why it was such a like whoa yeah, moment? I think so. Definitely, mm-hmm. I would, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. So yeah, because it's like. If you were born, like, even, like, a couple of years older than us, you know, and you kind of miss the... Well, yeah, the first we, film came out in 2001. There's people to, you know, turn 18 now, born after that first movie came out. Yeah. Like, between 2001 to 2000... What's Iron Man? 2008? 2006, 2006 seven, six, something like seven. That, yeah. I think seven. I'm going to say seven. Yeah, so there's definitely an age group there of people who were just old enough to watch Iron Man, but weren't uh, weren't old enough to watch Spider Man when it came out. So, and maybe never went back. So, or maybe only got into the MCU. You know, like a lot of people did, where it it took for like for Ragnarok. A lot of people like love that because of the comedy and stuff. So, um, a lot of people have uh, haven't been long time time fans. So yeah, it's it's definitely interesting to see if people if that if that works in the long run. This like intertwining potential timelines or Weird stuff like that. By the way, uh, are you not doing uh, uh, building MCU? You don't have Mysterio's fucking background there. What are you doing? What? He's not coming back. He's dead. <laughs> no, he's definitely. I think he's definitely featured. Do you think he's coming? You think Quentin Beck's coming back? <sighs> I think he's going to be there in some form. Do I need the characters that are lasting one more movie? Yeah, that's the that's what this whole entire thing's been. <laughs> because he he's going to last into the next movie technically. Okay, well, Quinton Beck debuted Amazing Spider-Man number 13, uh, June 1964, created by Stanley and Steve Ditko. Uh, obviously, this I I think Jake Gyllenhaal's amazing in this. Uh, I think it's it's an it was an interesting period this period of for Jake Gyllenhaal, where is a bit obviously he played some uh, more sinister characters around that time, and this he was much more friendly, like the cool was uncle. It- was Nightcrawler uh, around this time? Was that? I think that was a few years before. Nightcrawlers were like 2014 yeah. or something like that. But that that was the swerve of him playing the creepy dude, which he's done a few times now, and that's yeah. what he's doing in here to a degree. So his yeah. ability to switch, like th- that switch after the bar scene, like in between him being with Peter and then him being with everybody else, of like his switch in personality is great. Like it's fantastic. Like you, it just kind of all lines up really well. I say swerve. But he's Donnie Darko, so I, I don't know if yes. it, like. But it's more so like his <laughs> adult years. He was trying to be a bit more serious, and then he's like, "Nah, back no, to doing Donnie Darko." <laughs> yeah. but no, uh, go watch him in John Mulaney and the Cyclone Punch. Uh, he's great in that. Uh, but yeah, I think their whole plan kind of weird that they. I guess it it all hinged on this one lady finding about Edith, and Edith being given to Peter Parker. Uh, but yeah, all the effort that went into. It's like twenty different people, all accomplices. To this I don't know what the long term plan is though. Like their plan is just to be Keep... the best superhero and be famous and rich. They just yes. want to become the new Tony Stark. They want to fill the void yeah. that is Tony Stark. 
But it's like, what happens when a real bad guy shows up? Yeah, they don't. I don't think they think that far ahead. (laughs) Yeah, how (laughs) are you going to plan the animations for that? Yeah, like what happens when, like, if Thanos showed up after, what would they? (laughs) What's their long term plan? I don't think they actually care. (laughs) I think they're just more like, look, if we get to that point, then maybe we can come up with an idea, or there'll be the other Avengers around. Like, we won't have to Mm. do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where do, do you uh, wonder where all the other Avengers are? Or don't they? I mean, fake fake Nick Fury kind of says, you know, Thor's off well. Captain Mar- Marvel can't be contacted. Um, who else is there? Where's War Machine? Uh, doing paperwork. He's not Where's, an Avenger. What's Doctor Strange up to? What's you know Hawkeye up to? I'll tell you what. I think doing. Hawkeye's retired. Oh, well. Hawkeye's training his uh, apprentice. And yeah. um, S- Scarlet Witch is Going somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we. I mean, find now out I think soon. about it. Yeah, oh. there kind of is no Avengers. <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, Doctor look, Strange is nobody... potentially dealing with the outcome of One Division. Yeah. So. Uh, nobody, Black Panther nobody, is unfortunately is able to turn yeah. up to One Division. They're certainly not turning up for these fucks in Spider Man. Well, nobody knows was ever, was about One Division. It's one town. They would have found if if one of like the Avengers goes fucking mental. They're trying to I'm keep sure it the, secret. The first, yeah, but keeping it secret is different to hey, other Avengers, can you come give us a fucking hand, please? Because uh, shit's going bad. No, there's no Avengers like, left. Ken Wu has to the fucking thing. He has uh, has to have a direct line to Ant Man to yeah. to fucking Scott Lang. Hey, yeah. buddy, what are you doing? Can you, you like shrink down game? and walk through? <laughs> Walk through this hex, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, Ash, how, how does everyone feel about there being no, the first MCU movie with no Stan Lee sighting? I mean, like I think I said, in a, like I said in a previous film, they had the perfect Spider Man send off with him in Spider Man into Spider Verse. Uh, so they should have just cut that scene out and put it in here somewhere, somehow. Just animate the animated scene randomly in a live action movie? Yep. Sure. They could no, have done. They, they could have. I mean, they could have had him in some funny montage or something, just a picture of, or included him in the credits. I don't know. I think. Yeah. I think his last one being in Endgame, even though it's not as good yeah. as Captain Marvel, I think his last one in Endgame is fitting. Yeah. And then not have that as a staple for the rest of the MCU moving forward, because at yeah. some point they're going to do it wrong. Yeah. Or it's not going to hit right, and they're just going to get backlash for it. So it's mad. So look, we've done it. You know. We had a nice send off in Endgame where he quote unquote drove off into the sunset, and that is the that that is where we're leaving it. And I, I perfectly appreciate that. Yep. Yeah. All right, uh, Dylan. What's the most marvelous moment from Spider Man: Far From Home? On the bridge when MJ is like, "You're Spider Man," and he's like, "No, I'm not." And then he's like, "She's like, I think you are," and he's like, "Okay, fuck it, I am." And MJ is like, "Holy shit! Well- <laughs> I was only sixty percent sore." <laughs> After they time, accidentally though. set off the hologram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. That's my, yeah. I think I think that's just the moment I liked moment. It's almost like uh just yeah, the the team rom com y type moment. That's, yeah. That's the moment where they start clicking and you see a little you see her break out of her I like dead things mo like sort of caricature and uh gets a bit more lively or whatever. So no, I, I enjoy that moment. That's 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 my pick. Yeah. Uh Kieran, what's your most marvelous moment from Spider Man Far From Home? Uh, happy and Peter's conversation in the plane. Um, yeah, I think for me, that moment is so pivotal to um, Peter as a character, but then also I think it fulfills Happy a lot more and him going forward. Um, and then just that that last moment that is so like heart like bittersweet of Peter jumping in straight into the the um, engineering section in the back. Picking stuff up, doing a movement that I swear we've seen um, Tony Stark do before. He puts his hand in like the glove and moves that around, and then just to cap that off with uh, the ACDC that gets called Led Zeppelin. Um, I think just that whole <laughs> section of um, this movie is fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty special. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Peter and Mysterio in Germany. That whole hologram sequence. Uh, so good so good and like sets up how much of a threat uh, Mysterio can be uh, if used I popped, properly 
I popped so hard when the image of Peter in snowy New York inside the Mysterio helmet popped up because that's one of my favorite comic book um, Covers, cover arts, yeah. like ever. So as soon as that, when that came up on screen, I was like, "Holy fuck, that's awesome!" Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Uh, I also enjoyed the the uh, relationship between Martin Starr and uh, JB Smooth as the chaperones for this science tour science tour where they do no science at all well the thing is jb Smith says that towards the end he's like where the fuck was the science he goes like we're, like, we're on some trip with no science like i like when um what's his face the the kids like oh i've got these pictures of peter in a bathroom and all this stuff and he's like stop <laughs> he's like i right, dude i'm gonna be real with you you need to stop that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, what we didn't, what we later found out was um, Brad grew up to be Dr. Disrespect. And uh, he there you go. What a, what, wow, a, what a what a pull. What a call. <laughs> <laughs> Bold choice to. to um, <laughs> uh, We're also, in the Champions Club now. That's fine. I really, <laughs> really enjoy Flash in this as well. Uh, he gets some great comedic moments. Uh, I don't... I, uh, someone else... I don't know who brought it up. Uh, I can't remember where I heard it, but it's kind of weird that Flash still is in love with Spider-Man after I Crash. said this last... That's I right. I said in Homecoming, the Homecoming episode, where it's like, why is he a dorky super fan after he stole his car and crashed it to shit? Never Again, explains. I, I, I just, just put Spider-Man. it down to... There's a lot of this stuff where I'm like, there's time gaps. Like, presumably Spider-Man's been helping out in the neighborhood so, a lot. Um, he got a lot of better press after stopping the Falcon. Like, I, I can, I can. The Vulture. If we, if no, we Vulture, ever sorry. get, if we ever get a the version Falcon. of, he's probably like, isn't... wow, I helped Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. If if that's, we ever that's... get a version of Venom that isn't directly tied to the Tom Hardy one, I don't think it's going to be Flash. I actually think it's going to be that Brad kid. I mean, I don't, is Venom not? No, it's separate, isn't it? Yeah, but they no, want to I mean, use. They want it to be. Together. They want it to be, but they want it. And to it be could together. be. Yeah, I don't know. We'll it's see. Still, we'll see. Um, I do. Venom I do love comes that. Comes out later this year. Yeah, I need to watch the first one. I eh? um, they I, I do love that scene where F- Flash is like watching news and he's getting off fanboy. He's like, and then whoever's like, "Why do you love Spider Man?" Like, he's like, "Oh, he just he's great. You know, he helps. He saves the city. What up, fuckface or whatever he says." <laughs> <you know? laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's good shit. Uh, again, also shout out to Ned and Betty. This film, what a great couple! They're great. Unfortunate, They're great. That they you know they just, grew apart. Just Adults, how... Peter, we just grow apart. We it's share just, time. <laughs> it's just so typical. Anybody who's been through high school and has gone on like a like a trip or anything, yeah, you've all known to like a relationship that's been exactly like that, where they've gotten really close during like a school camp, and then by the end of the school camp or a week later, it's done. Yeah. I don't think I ever went on school camp, but I definitely did like at a swimming carnival. I dated a girl in high school for the entirety of the swimming carnival and we broke up at the end of the day. So I feel like that's my cl- the closest equivalent I've got. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just they have some great comedic moments like them on the Ferris wheel. I just threw up in my mouth. I kissed you, but I just threw up in my mouth. I got I've got a mint. <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, shout out to the Night Monkey. <laughs> well, Night Monkey, up here! No one's like, it looks like, it's just Spider-Man in black. It's just, <laughs> like, you, know, you didn't see Spider-Man, it's just, that's the European rip-off. You know? mm. well, the other one was um, Ned having to try and be, like, the, the convincing voice about going to the opera. <laughs> like, just like, I think it's going to be a great idea. I think it's going to really experience this culturally. culturally. Yeah, he loves doing that though. <laughs> Anything. You know, what ma- no one makes me laugh at Night Monkey though. I don't know if it's like an it's specifically supposed to be this sort of joke, but I'm like, in reality, y- Europe would have Spider Man and America would have the American rip off. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you're doing like a, a a film joke where it's like, oh, the it's a European rip off or whatever, it's like it would be the opposite. Like, or the <laughs> movie would be, would be set in China. Yeah. And then yes. also um, Ned being like, uh, okay, now that you're uh, uh, FOS, FOS, a friend of Spider-Man, mm. uh, you you know that we have to play it cool, and yeah. uh, and just his whole competitiveness being like, well, I knew it first, and I've been Spider-Man's known this secret for the longest, and and MJ's yeah. just right. chill on like cool. I, I figured, I figured it, it out, out. Like, <laughs> I figured it out. Like he's, he's also he's also on the game when when he walks in and sees Peter in the costume. 
Nice cosplay, uh, Halloween costume there, Peter. Yep. Oh, real good. <laughs> like, <laughs> not even a falter. Yeah. Yeah, even before that, the moment where Peter's, like, taking off his clothes and <laughs> MJ's just sta- standing there. Staring. Just staring. Yeah. Well, Greek. she tries. Yeah. I think anybody would stare at Tom Holland, you know? He's, he's yacked. Yeah, in that film. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anything else you guys want to talk about? I think there is one interesting like tidbit that they mention. Uh, Nick Fury mentions as Kree sleeper cells around the world. Mm. Whether yep. that is something that comes to put into play later in the future, um, sorry, that could be a thing. Um, um, why is Nick where's Fury Maria on Hill? The sort? Oh, I was going to ask about s- s- the. Okay, where is Maria Hill? I don't know, but also what what the fuck is Nick Fury actually doing? Holiday. Is he though? I think so. So that's the thing. I remember the first time being like, he's just on a holiday. But then I'm like, he's not on a holiday. It seems like he's on his weekend or like he's on his his break and he's actually just up. Maybe there he's now. actually he maybe he's going somewhere. Yeah, he's just, mm. just taking the moment. Maybe something happens in WandaVision that causes Nick Fury to have to travel to Sword to help out. Mm. No, I don't think so. I think that's more I personally feel like that's trying to connect to Captain Marvel too. Possibly. Potentially. I think is the, the actual connection. All right. Uh, I think we hit everything. Um, all right. This week's comic recommendation, the comic for this week, is Spider-Man, uh, written by Brian Michael Bendis, writ- penciled by Sarah Piccelli. Uh, this sees the coming together of, the first ever coming together of P- the Earth-616 universe, Peter Parker, and the Ultimate Comics universe's Miles Morales. Uh, in which Mysterio accidentally brings them all together uh, in in where Peter goes into the Ultimate Universe, a uh, universe in which he's died, you know, and he teams up with uh, Miles. Uh, again, didn't get to this one. <laughs> uh, so, Dylan, what'd you think? This is some good shit. I really enjoyed this one. This was just some wholesome Spider-Man on Spider-Man stuff. Uh, very easy read. I read all. That's not the way I meant it. Uh, very easy read. They, I, I think I read all five issues or whatever it was in in one night. And it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. So, a, you start. Peter's like, oh, I'm having a good time. It's blasted to this of the alternate universe. You have a lot of um, great moments when they first arrive. It almost feels very um, uh, Spider Versey when he first gets to the alternate universe because. Uh, he runs into Miles and, you know, both of them accuse the other one of being, you know, a, f- a fake Spider-Man to a degree and they have a little bit of a battle and this sort of stuff. But um, the the comic also has a lot of heartwarming moments, especially when, of course, once Peter realizes he's in this alternate universe and, you know, he can actually go speak to family members and friends that may or may not exist in the one he's in and this sort of stuff. And Miles gets asked some questions about his universe and um, stuff like that. It's not very action heavy. There's... I think there's like there's the fight scene at the start and there's like a fight scene for Mysterio towards the end of the run, but primarily between all that, it's mostly just Spider two Spider Man talking to each other and have having some cool conversations and cool moments between characters and stuff. And yeah, I, I really really enjoyed it. Quite enjoyed it. I as soon as I finished it, I was like, "Where's it going next? I want to I want to pick up where the because there is like a sort of cliffhanger, I guess. I was like, "Okay, what what canonically is the thing I have to keep reading to keep reading this Spider Man story?" So I, I yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Cool, uh, Kieran. Uh, I only got into the start of this just because of last week's uh, like choices were kind of quite long. Um, but I enjoy any... I love this section of Spider-Man in general. Like, I love the Spider-Verse in general, going all the way back to the animated series when that was originally um, kind of venturing into that section. Um, but it's, it's always really good to... Um, it's always good for, you know... Spider-Man or the individual Spider-Man to be able to find the moments where they realize they're finally not alone and there's somebody else that understands them or kind of is on the same wavelength and just the narrative and the discussions that come out of that connection is always so interesting Um, and I'm definitely going to finish off the run before um, like after the episode but I think it's it's really great and I both adore both Peter and Miles to the moon and back so um put them in anything and I'll, and I'll be happily to read it every time awesome yeah there's definitely one i'm gonna have to chase back up to uh get to uh but i guess this brings us to the end of this episode 
of all new Marvel cast. Uh, let us know what you thought of this film, Spider-Man Far From Home, what you thought of our theories about what's coming next, about the comic Spider-Man, uh, by going to explosionhome.com slash Twitter. You'll find all of our Twitter handles there. Um, this brings us to the end of our all new Marvel cast MCU rewatch. Uh, I don't know. We'll probably be doing like a ranking episode. Haven't confirmed it yet. Uh, but <laughs> you we've got more. Now? Do you want my rankings? Do you, um, do so, have- no, no, no. I'll beat him to it. I'll beat him to it. I'll beat him to it. Um, anything but Endgame that features the word Avengers <laughs> somewhere down the bottom. Anything that involves Ant Man like somewhere at the top. And then everything else gets graded on the amount of character interactions there are within the movie. You how want, much diversity? Do you want, do you want to, to, do you want to, No, do we'll you want save it for like a full episode. It's fine. I don't feel like that's a full episode, but sure. Yeah. Oh, he's just said it. He's just all. Oh, oh. It doesn't need to be a long episode. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so make sure you watch more Marvel stuff and join us next time for another all new Marvel cast. Yeah.